Uh, hi, yeah, so I've been trying to get my uh, iPad Pro to work with Blender, um, trying to replicate uh, the workflow of a, a Wacom Cintiq, um, especially for, for Blender use. Uh, I've had, been fiddling around quite a bit and um, just kind of feeling pretty much there. There are some main differences, but um, so I've basically been using AstroPad Studio and Duet Pro um, in conjunction with a MacBook Pro. So uh, Duet Pro, if I load it up, um, we can see, uh, you can see, uh, there we go, it's brought up Blender. And the great thing about Duet Pro is that it basically makes your iPad Pro into a second screen with full graphics tablet capabilities. Uh, so if I do a quick video of, no, a photo, a video, of my setup so you can see I've got an uh, iPad Pro connected to my MacBook Pro and you can see I've got different activity on both screens uh, which is very useful um, and it really works I mean it even sort of recognizes uh, my window snapping with better touch tool I can't quite get the dock to work and um, that's not a deal breaker um, so yeah a lot of the problems I've had with Blender have actually been solved by using Blender's own system preferences. So if I do an Apple comma for my preferences, the first thing you want to make sure is that emulate three button mouse is on, uh, and that's a, a setting for one click sort of input devices. Um, and what that means is uh, using Alt uh, and the pencil click, I can um, rotate my view and uh, control and alt zooms and shift and alt pans my view. That works totally seamlessly uh, and kind of feels very natural. And obviously, with a, a Wacom, you'd you'd have a a right click and a middle click, um, which you would I, I would normally do all of my navigating with. Um, so it's not it's that's a bit of a thing to get used to. Um, I can't really imagine Apple making a pencil with a right click, or certainly not with two clicks. Uh, but hopefully they'll open up the technology so that other people can, because that would that would really make the experience uh, very similar to working with Wacom. But anyway, you kind of get used to the Alt Control and Shift to to move the scene around. Um, so the problem I've had with both uh, AstroPad and Duet, and it's not really a fault of the apps, it's it's just more of a difference between how an iPad works and a, a computer works, especially with a 3D program. Um, so something simple like just sort of grabbing an object and moving it, um, normally the the cursor moving across a, a screen on the computer would, would sort of quite normally do that. But if you see, if I press G for grab with this thing selected, um, it's it, it doesn't react like it, it would with a Cintiq. Um, you know, I spent ages. Let's do a rotate of tapping R and then trying to rotate it and then trying to trying to do it quickly and holding down R, and it's just uh, you know just not the not the way it works. And um, so what I've found is help putting my pencil to the screen, um, then tapping R or whatever function you want, uh, you get a nice smooth action. Another little idiosyncrasy is that you sort of have to tap in the place to okay it because once you it, it doesn't okay the action by lifting uh, the pencil off the surface so it took a surprising amount of time to, to just really work that out um, so again it's tap s say for scale and then you get a nice clean movement as opposed to I spent like a day trying to work out you know the right way of doing it and, and that's the only real solution um, and then yeah one of the problems with that was normally you'd lose, use your left click to place your 3D cursor. Um, so I've just uh, changed the preferences. So in, in user preference, Apple comma, and in the input, you've got all your keyboard shortcuts. Um, I might struggle to find it quickly. Um, but basically, I set 3D cursor. All right, there it is. Um, so if I can put the cursor there, yeah, so just around there, it would normally be um, left click, and what I've just done is the shift and uh, accent grab, I believe it is, uh, right next to the shift button, and now 
if I move my cursor on the screen and then just tap shift and press and graph, um, you can see I've got it places the 3D cursor. And that's actually quite good because I'm always accidentally placing my 3D cursor. Um, so that just means that I can touch the screen without really affecting anything, uh, which is useful for those sort of basic uh, actions and transforms. Um, so again, within edit mode, it's the same thing really. And again, the same issue I was sort of fighting with of trying to get that. Let's just turn that off. So if I do an R, and I was doing all this stuff, it was just a nightmare to get it, you know, to get it to work fluidly. So again, it's just that keeping your uh, pencil on the screen and then tapping. Oh, that didn't work. So I think my pawn confused it. There we go. It's it's sort of workable, and I, the more I'm using it, the more I'm getting used to it. Um, one of the big things I struggled with trying to work out. Uh, within this was selecting an edge loop. So normally on a computer you would uh, do an alt right click. Um, so to do a right click on Blender with an iPad Pro using the emulate free button mouse thing, it's command and click. Uh, I think it's control and click in other apps. Um, but doing the combination of alt and then command and click as a right click didn't isn't activating my loop cut selection. So again, um, it's just about changing your shortcut keys. Um, I think that's going to be in mesh. Uh, so we've got um, the loop select, and uh, it's probably not the catchiest thing, but I went with the, the bottom three modifier keys together, uh, and that, that sees that as a control command middle click, which makes sense. So now if I hold those three down, you can see I can select my loop cuts and that was one of the, I'm sure other things will turn up the more I work on this but um, that was one of the main things that I couldn't just do with um, solve with the pencil alone um, yeah so um, differences between uh, Duet Pro and Astro Pad Studio which I'll come to shortly um, obviously you've got the, the difference between the way the screens working and I can pretty much use uh, my desktop is a normal sort of working screen, and you know I can I've got my dock at the bottom and all of that, so it totally replaces. Uh, yeah, there, there. But um, anyway, um, uh, yeah. So a big difference is with Astro Pad Studio, you you get to use some sort of iPad um, touch so, so shortcuts. So you know, um, two fingers to to pan and zoom kind of works. Um, in Duet Pro um, you can kind of get a, a scroll going, it doesn't always seem to work um, but that's kind of like the old school Google Maps, it's a bit defunct now as a as a thing. Um, but what Duet Pro does do that um, Mac, uh, Astro Pad Studio doesn't, uh, is it sort of lets you use your finger in conjunction with uh, a pencil, so you can you can click on buttons with your finger, um, and the reason why Astro Pad doesn't do that is because it lets you do other things with your fingers. So, um, yeah, um, and so far I found it uh, pretty effortless to work on now. So it's starting to feel like uh, a good replacement or a mobile solution uh, for working Blender. Uh, I'm probably forgetting loads of things, but okay, let's just close Duet. This might take a little bit of transitioning. Uh, I'm going to quit Duet and uh, get rid of Duet there. And let's launch AstroPad Studio. And I need to open AstroPad Studio on my computer. Okay, um, so it's, it's a quite a different. Um, Cat the fish. You can see if I get my video up again. Come on. Uh, the the same um, same thing is uh, displayed on both. And you can see that uh, you can kind of zoom in uh, to an area on your screen uh, to, to take advantage of to sort of use it at full full screen. 
So I've, I've adapted my blender so it's sort of in a little bit and then I've zoomed in here and, and it sort of perfectly matches up so I'm using as much of the screen as possible. Um, but obviously I don't have, I'm not able to use that as a second screen which, uh, yeah. So uh, again, um, with all those settings changed, uh, AstroPad works pretty well. It's being a bit laggy, but then I am recording on my laptop as well. Um, which is the reason for this slightly strange setup. Um, but all of that works uh, pretty well. Um, again, my shortcuts are all working. Uh, oh, that's a bit slow. Okay. Uh, lasso. Um, now, AstroPad's got a lot more functions. I got really excited by uh, the idea of not even needing a keyboard and having all my um, commonly used uh, keyboard shortcuts on the side. And this works really well. So, you know, I've got all the navigation things so I could hold down, pan, and that works really nicely. Zoom, and you know, I've got various shortcuts. Um, to the um, but essentially I, I kind of got carried away with that but then realised that actually the way I want to work is um, stylus, pencil, pen on screen and hand on keyboard, that's just what I'm used to, that's the way I want to work. Um, yeah, and then I mentioned uh, being able to use um, sort of iPad uh, gestures, so you can zoom in, that's working, that's good, it can, can be a bit hit and miss sometimes. Um, and I can move my view. Um, you, yeah, depending on how you've set your natural direction, you may have to tweak your settings to get it to, to move in the same same way. I have my MacBook set to not natural setting because I, I like the old the old way. Um, but then then you have to sort of reverse the setting on here. Um, so that all works really well. Um, there's also uh, some other what they call magic gestures uh, I think I've changed this that you can sort of so we've got the hover so if I tap one finger and then move my cursor around you can see the cursor moved as if it was um, a screen so it's not actually that helpful if I do an apple click for, for the, the problem with um, you know actions on a screen so if I do G and then do the hover thing I mean, it kind of it sometimes works, it works pretty well. But I, again, I want to avoid being to jump between different things. I want one hand on one hand with pencil on the screen and one hand on the keyboard. But anyway, that kind of works. Uh, in Duet Pro, it defaults as function and holding down function and putting the screen down. That didn't seem to work so well. But they seem to kind of hover um, automatically anyway in certain things. And you've got these other things. Uh, I've not really used them because I've got other things set up. Uh, but you know, those can be tweaked and quite useful. You've got a two finger tap to undo um, and redo, but I don't have actually got the action there. Uh, is that everything? Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, no, it's not everything. Uh, so if I go back to my workspace, um, there are some additional handy um, little shortcut things. So you've got your Main modifier keys. You can even you can move uh, this little widget or whatever you want to call it. Um, bit of the studio thing, and this all works well. So I could could uh, oh yeah use these modifier keys to to do some of my basic uh, navigation things. Um, and also there's a keyboard which is kind of handy so you know I really could potentially use this on the go um, without a keyboard um, oh yeah that's another difference um, AstroPad works without uh, being plugged in whereas Duet Pro doesn't at all um, but that for me isn't really a, a big deal I'm, I'm kind of happy for it to be plugged in and it, it totally works a lot faster. Um, I suppose I should mention the sculpt mode. Uh, so if I 
just got a 3D cursor there and shift A, add a cube. Uh, it's sculpt mode and, and again it's now very equivalent between the, the two apps um, in terms of the use of uh, the pencil for sculpt mode. Um, it works really well in both AstroPad Studio and Duet Pro. So if I go to sculpt mode and turn on dynamic topology uh, got drawn. Oh yeah, so if I want to change the brush size, normally that would be an F. And again, you've got this problem of not being able to move the cursor. I found you can sort of click uh, away from or inside and uh, set the new brush size, but obviously that's not very ideal. Um, so actually, if you do F and then hold down F, sorry, and then keep the pencil on the screen, you can accurately size your brush and yeah it works it works really nicely um, you really really using uh, the iPad Pro's pressure sensitivity abilities um, with no issues and again yeah it's the same in, in both packages and yeah you can know uh, in the same way that with say Procreate, you can really feel the difference of that pressure sensitivity from, from a Wacom. Uh, that subtle difference is feelable here as well. So yeah, 